When I called to check on my daughter, who had gone missing, my granddaughter answered the phone, her voice trembling with urgency. Daddy sank mommy in the bath and went somewhere. She said, followed by shocking words. Rushing to my daughter's house, I was met with a terrifying scene. To subject my daughter to this. That man, I'll never forgive him. I gritted my teeth, determined to send my son-in-law to the depths of hell. It's almost Amy's fifth birthday. I wonder what would be a good present. I messaged my daughter, but three days passed with no response. Gazing at the family photo displayed in the living room, I wiped my tears. I wish I could see them more often. I wonder if those kids are doing okay? My name is Sarah. Widowed and living alone while working part-time. I have a daughter named Nancy. She has always been kind and studious since she was little, a proud daughter who landed a job at a major corporation. Nancy got married six years ago to Jason. He is an elite worker at a leading advertising agency. He was cheerful and dependable, and I felt reassured in trusting my daughter to him. They soon had a granddaughter, Amy, and Nancy quit her job to become a full-time homemaker. The distance between my house and my daughter's family home is about a three-hour drive using the highway. It's not a distance you can just casually pop over to. Nancy used to visit frequently when Amy was little, but the last time she came to our house was a year ago, right after Amy's fourth birthday. I remember having this conversation with Nancy at that time. Is Jason doing well? Is he helping out with childcare? I asked. Nancy replied. He seems busy with work lately, so I've been handling childcare mostly. But he loves Amy and takes good care of her. He's even known as the ideal hands-on dad at work. I could imagine how busy Jason must be with his job. Make sure you support him. I said, to which Nancy just laughed and replied. I know, mom. According to Nancy, Jason's reputation as an involved father had even reached his bosses, and he was put in charge of a major advertising project targeting parents. Well, that's impressive. Say, Nancy, now that things have settled down with raising Amy, how about returning to work? You used to shine in your career. I suggested. Yeah, maybe eventually. Nancy replied vaguely. I felt a slight unease at my daughter's ambiguous response, but whether she worked or not was a matter for their household. I decided not to intervene further. It's been over six months since then, and Nancy hasn't visited. I've tried inviting her a few times, but she always declines. I felt I shouldn't push too hard and interfere too much. One day, while I was unusually out in town for a class reunion, something caught my attention on my way back home. As I headed towards the station, I spotted my son-in-law, Jason, walking along with a young woman, engaged in what seemed like an intimate conversation. However, since he was dressed in a suit, I assumed it was probably a business outing or something and didn't approach them. After some time had passed since that incident, I had some errands that took me near my daughter's family's neighborhood. Wanting to see their faces since I was already nearby, I messaged. Can I come over now? But there was no response. Thinking it was okay if there wasn't one, I decided to head straight to my daughter's house. When I rang the doorbell, my daughter answered with a surprised voice. Mom, why are you here? I sent a message, didn't you see it? I came by since I was nearby. Is everything okay? Then my daughter fell silent on the other side of the intercom, and instead, I heard Jason's voice. I'm sorry, mother-in-law. It's a bit messy here, but I'll clean up right away. Jason, sorry for dropping by unannounced. We'll be waiting. I replied. After standing there for about 10 minutes, the front door opened, and when I saw Nancy standing there, I couldn't help but be taken aback. She looked so frail compared to the last time I saw her, it was like a lie. Nancy, you look much thinner. What's going on? I asked. Just on a bit of a diet. She replied. Then, my granddaughter Amy came running up, saying. Grandma. Jason warmly greeted me, so I exchanged pleasantries and went into the living room. While watching Amy play with her toys, the three adults engaged in small talk. Jason was as charming as ever, showing genuine concern for me, appearing flawless. At one point, 
Nancy got up to refill the tea. I followed her and asked. Nancy, you look pale. Are you eating properly? Are you feeling unwell? No, I'm fine. I'm healthy. She replied. Despite her words, I noticed something concerning her wrist as her sleeve slipped. I grabbed her arm and lifted her sleeve, revealing a painful-looking bruise. Nancy, what happened? Jason, who had somehow appeared at the entrance to the kitchen, interjected. It's just a bruise from a fall. Nancy can be a bit clumsy sometimes. You fell. Is that true, Nancy? I asked. Yes, it's true. She stepped on one of Amy's toys and fell inside the house. Nancy nodded in agreement with Jason's assertive tone, and then she distanced herself from me. The kitchen conversation ended there, but I began to observe Nancy and my granddaughter closely after that. Amy remained her usual cheerful and innocent self, but Nancy seemed somewhat withdrawn, appearing a bit tense. Sarah, we have plans to go out as a family soon. Jason said, prompting me to reply. Yes, it's about time for me to leave. On the way home, I sent Nancy a message, saying. If anything is wrong, don't hesitate to talk to me. Her reply was. There's nothing wrong. I'm happy, so don't worry. Despite feeling an unsettling sense of unease, I returned home. Two months have passed since I visited my daughter's family. I sent Nancy numerous messages, but received no reply, and she stopped answering my calls. She always responded to messages before. It's strange that the calls aren't going through. Are Nancy and Amy both okay? I want to see them and make sure. With these thoughts in mind, I decided to visit on a night when they were likely to be home. Sending Nancy a message saying, I'm coming over now. I got into my car around 6 p.m. During a stop at a service area, I decided to call Nancy again. However, when the phone was answered, it was my granddaughter, Amy, on the other end. Grandma? Mommy's turned a strange color and won't move. Those words sent a shiver down my spine, but I tried to remain as calm as possible as I asked my granddaughter. What are you saying, Amy? Is Daddy there? Daddy sank mommy in the bath and went somewhere. What should we do, Grandma? Mommy isn't responding. Hearing the urgency in her voice, I realized this was no ordinary situation and hurried to my granddaughter's side. An hour later, upon arriving at my daughter's house, I was speechless. Upon opening the front door, I was met with a horrifying scene. The house was in disarray, with items strewn about, vases and dishes shattered and left abandoned. It looked as though a burglar had broken in or someone had gone on a rampage. Grandma, this way, quickly. Startled by my granddaughter's call, I hurriedly followed her lead to the bathroom. There, my daughter, fully clothed, lay submerged in the bathtub, face up. Nancy, stay with me. I frantically reached into the icy water, despite it being midwinter. Managing to lift her, my daughter's face was beyond pale, her lips tinged purple. Just as her face barely emerged from the water, there was a faint sign of breathing. Despite numerous attempts to rouse her, she remained unresponsive, prompting me to immediately dial 911. Before the ambulance arrived, my granddaughter rushed over to me, saying, Mom said there's something important in her bag. She pointed to a navy bag hanging on the living room wall. Upon a quick check, I found her insurance card in the wallet. Grabbing the bag, I boarded the ambulance upon its arrival. After arriving at the hospital, Nancy's treatment began immediately, while my granddaughter and I sat on chairs in the hallway. Amy, is it true that Dad submerged Mom in the bathtub? Amy nodded with a pale face. Dad sometimes hits mom and takes her to the bath. Amy is told to stay in the living room, but it's always scary. I feel sorry for mom. My granddaughter explained. Amy. I instinctively hugged her, and she began to sob uncontrollably. Dad said, if you tell anyone, you'll never see mom again. Amy, because I told grandma, will I never see mom again? 
I don't want that. I continued to comfort my granddaughter, rubbing her back and reassuring her. It's okay, it's okay. Then, the nurse informed me that Nancy had regained consciousness. Nancy, still groggy, weakly turned her gaze towards me. Mom, please look at my navy bag. There. With just those words, she drifted back to sleep. I carefully examined Nancy's bag once again, and to my horror, I found something unimaginable. Trembling, I confirmed what I found, gritting my teeth. To put my daughter through this. That man, I will never forgive him. At that moment, I resolved to send my son-in-law Jason straight to hell. Despite multiple attempts to call Jason, I couldn't reach him. So, I entrusted a trustworthy acquaintance nearby with something. Three days after my daughter was taken to the hospital, I received a call from my son-in-law on my mobile phone. I heard from a neighbor that Nancy was taken away in an ambulance. The woman with glasses who was with her, that's Sarah, right? Are you at the hospital now? Please tell me where you are. I didn't disclose the hospital's location but instead instructed Jason to come to a cafe near the station. After leaving Amy with an acquaintance, I waited at the meeting place, where Jason arrived, breathing heavily. Sarah, I'm sorry. I was away on a business trip, so I'm not sure what's going on. What happened to Nancy? Which hospital is she in? Please tell me quickly. Jason spoke with genuine concern, but I wasn't fooled by his appearance anymore. I heard everything from Amy. You did something terrible to Nancy, submerged her in the bath, and left her, didn't you? How could you do such a thing? Jason murmured. Uh. Then awkwardly chuckled. I can't believe it, Sarah. Did Amy really say that? Surely you're not taking a child's words at face value? Are you suggesting Amy is lying? Jason explained. Since she started kindergarten, she occasionally says things like that. It's like she has a vivid imagination or a habit of lying. We've been dealing with it too. So, without saying a word, I played back the voice recorder I had taken out of my bag. What emanated from it was Jason's yelling. Divorce. That insolent wife of mine. I have to teach you a lesson. I'll discipline you in the bath like usual. His words were unbearable, filled with countless vulgarities. Afterwards, there were sounds of splashing water and Amy crying out recorded on it. As Jason paled, I stared straight at him and stopped the voice recorder. What is this? Jason stammered. Nancy was recording what happened that day. Perhaps she anticipated this, although she probably didn't expect to be taken to the hospital. I remarked. That. She did that. How insolent. Finally showing your true colors. I retorted. Jason wore a frustrated expression, but then quickly adopted a soothing tone. Sarah. This is just a matter between spouses. It was just a heated argument at that time. No need to blow it out of proportion, right? It's also not good for Amy, you know? The evidence doesn't stop here. There's more. With those words, I slammed down on the table the decisive photos of Jason's infidelity. They depicted him cozying up to a young woman, entering hotels together, and engaging in intimate moments. The woman was someone I had seen in the streets a few months ago. This too, Nancy did this. Jason hastily gathered the photos, and I calmly explained to him. Nancy had hired a private investigator to look into you. Is she someone from your company? And Nancy kept a diary too. What? In Nancy's diary that I read, it was written that Jason had been controlling, forbidding her from working since the beginning of their marriage. Furthermore, Nancy noted that Jason's behavior became strange around the time he became a project leader one year ago, and when she confronted him about it, she was physically assaulted for the first time. After that, she...
She mentioned being subjected to severe treatment under the guise of discipline on a daily basis and was warned that if she didn't comply, Amy would be harmed. Contact with me was also prohibited and it seems her phone was checked daily. However, Nancy pretended to obey Jason while diligently collecting evidence for the divorce. Now that I have gathered enough evidence, I will bring up the divorce today. Were the last words in my daughter's diary. You lost your temper when your wife asked for a divorce and did something terrible. Then you left her in the cold bath and went to see your mistress. Is that right? When I sternly confronted him, Jason remained calm and brazen. I'm the elite among elites. People often say I'm the ideal dad. I provide for Nancy and Amy, and we have a happy family. Are you trying to ruin that over something trivial? At that moment, I finally reached my limit. Nancy wasn't happy, and neither was Amy, who witnessed her mother being mistreated. I will not forgive you. You will pay for this. Jason then angrily shouted with a flushed face. What can this old hag do to me? I've already done what I could. I calmly replied, explaining to the bewildered Jason that I had sent the audio data from that night and evidence photos of his infidelity at work to his workplace. What did you just say? At that moment, Jason's phone rang, leaving him dumbfounded. As he answered the call in a panic, his face turned paler with each passing moment. Hey, it was from my boss. They're removing me from the project. You, you really did it, didn't you? How dare you? With his facade crumbling, Jason yelled at me with a contorted, ugly face. I remained composed and retrieved something from Nancy's bag. This is Nancy's decision. Please sign here. It was a divorce paper already signed by Nancy. Don't mess with me. I'll never let them go. Jason started tearing up the divorce paper with a flushed face, and I sighed. Then let's go to court. I'll make sure you'll be separated from my daughter. But before that, you'll have to pay for your sins. What? Right after you appeared at this cafe, I asked a friend to report it. The police will be here soon, so behave yourself. <laughs>
Jason turned pale and started trembling. You. You're going to involve the police. Do you realize what that will do to my career? I don't care. I'll never forgive you for what you've done. Never show yourself in front of me, Nancy, or Amy again. The police arrived, and Jason was taken away while shouting. Later, the divorce between the two was finalized. Jason was arrested for his cruel treatment towards Nancy. Along with my accusations, he was ultimately dismissed from his job due to being convicted. His mistress faced rumors at work and resigned. Although Jason's trial is ongoing, he has been cut off from his family and received no help from anyone. Nancy, now recovered, returned home with my granddaughter. Amy has regained her smile lately, and Nancy has found a job and is living a fulfilling life. We look forward to our granddaughter's growth and aim to support each other as a family from now on.